The Fine Arts Society has been around for 142 years, just across the road from Sotheby's on New Bond Street in London. Its significance in the British art world is enormous. This sale presents a survey of the work that they've done, the relationships they've had with artists, and details that history through the works that we are to offer. The Fine Arts Society was quite a sort of radical thing when it opened. In 1881, they commissioned an architect, Godwin, to create something truly unique. Godwin created an entrance that was full of light, a sort of outside, inside space, a way of enticing people in. When you walk through those doors, there's something very evocative. And you think about the people that were there, the artists that were there, and the clients. There's a wonderful letter to Oscar Wilde from the Fine Arts Society very early on, requesting payment for a work that he bought. And that gives you a sense of who was going in there. You had this appeal to the aesthetically minded people about town. They were going in to be enchanted and delighted. 1880 was an incredibly important year for the Fine Arts Society. They held Whistler's exhibition, a real happening, a real event in the London art world. Whistler was very involved and you get the feeling that he drove the early directors at the Fine Arts Society round the bend. He writes, the whole thing is a joy and indeed a masterpiece of, of mischief. So there's a revelry in, in what he's doing at the Fine Arts Society. And commercially, you know, it was, it was a very successful exhibition. The most important artist associated with the Fine Arts Society is Hannah Gluckstein, or Gluck, uh, she was known. In 1932, she created the Gluck Room at the Fine Arts Society. That was a very long-lasting relationship. And of course, an important moment as a female artist it's by no means the most important thing, but there are two brass exhibition poster holders that were always on New Bond Street, just fixed to the gallery on the outside. And the reason I find those interesting, there's, there's nothing in them, they're just the brass frames. It's the thought of what was presented in those, all those exhibitions, hundreds and hundreds of exhibitions for some of the greatest names of the late 19th century and 20th century. The Peter Blake connection at the Fine Arts Society comes largely in the flag, which we'll be offering in the sale, along with his design for the flag. It really underpins the relationship the Fine Arts Society had with artists. I miss it on Bond Street because when you, when you walk down and see that incredibly colourful banner, it's very special. Lots of British staples, high quality works for the discerning collector, and sculptors too. We all know Gilbert's work synonymous with London, Eros on Piccadilly. The gallery were really involved with that sculptor. In 1913, the Fine Arts Society did something quite radical. They showed photographs taken on Captain Scott's expedition to the South Pole. Again, quite a revolutionary thing to do. And people came in huge numbers. The images are achingly beautiful. Sale presents collectors with a unique opportunity to delve into one of the great institutions in the art world, a place that's very, very special indeed.